The history of our planet has been marked by extinction events where the loss of life was unimaginable. The late Triassic extinction event is among these and is thought to have spanned over 25 million years. This covers three periods of the Triassic, the Carnian, Norian and the Ratian, with different extinction events leading up to the Triassic-Jurassic boundary. These events led to the disappearance from the marine world of many cephalopod, ammonite and reptile families and marked the extinction of the conodont. They also drastically reduced the numbers of ostracods, sclerotinians and sponges. On land, the picture is not as clear, with much debate as to how extensive the loss of life was. However, several peaks and extinctions of terrestrial plants, along with the loss of 13 families of tetrapods, occurred at the end of the Carnian. By the end of the Ratian, even more tetrapods, along with many seed ferns, went extinct. What caused this enormous loss of life? I think we should take a visit back to the Triassic and maybe we can see what really did happen. Attributing causes to these extinction events has proved contentious. However, there are three generally accepted theories as to what may have caused the extinction events. These are Ebolite impact, climate change, and Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. Recently, researchers turned towards the sky for an explanation of extraterrestrial origin. For instance, you need only look at the moon to observe the destructive power of bolide impacts during the late heavy bombardment. Many impact craters around the world show just how severe and destructive these impacts can be. So, could one of these impacts have been large enough to contribute to the mass extinction observed in the late Triassic? Several bolide impact structures have been identified as being of the late Triassic. The smallest of these include those found in northeastern Canada, France, Ukraine and North America. These smaller collisions are thought to have occurred between 215 and 200 million years ago. While each of these impacts are significant, it would take more than one of these to cause such a widespread extinction of both land and marine species. The largest of these late Triassic craters is the Manicougan Crater in northeastern Canada. The 100 kilometer diameter crater is on a large enough scale to cause monumental damage and in turn have knock-on effects for the biosphere. However, since this proposal was made, improved dating techniques of the Triassic-Jurassic boundary from impact ejecta established that the impact was at the 214 million year mark, leading researchers to believe that the impact on its own was too early to cause the extinction of the Triassic-Jurassic boundary. While there are issues in dating the exact time intervals of these events, the presence of late Triassic impact craters and their coincidence with a mass extinction event cannot be disregarded as merely coincidental. So, as the bolide theory is not conclusive, we're going to have to look elsewhere. One of the popular theories suggested to explain the Triassic-Jurassic extinction event is based around the prolonged volcanic activity associated with the breakup of the supercontinent Pangaea. The vast area of these preserved volcanic rocks is known as Central Atlantic Magmatic Province. Camp is one of the biggest large igneous provinces on Earth and is thought to have erupted a volume of 2 million cubic kilometres of molten rock covering an area of 50,000 square kilometres in North America alone. Scattered outcrops of these rocks are found in areas such as the flood basalts of the Newark Basin in northeastern USA. So, how did these eruptions lead to a mass extinction? Decompressive melting associated with rifting led to huge volumes of sulfur dioxide and carbon dioxide emissions into the atmosphere. This sulfur dioxide caused transitionary atmospheric cooling. However, the vast amounts of the greenhouse gas CO2 caused longer term warming of the atmosphere by several degrees. The addition of these gases coupled with atmospheric moisture produced acid rain that killed plants on land and led to wider terrestrial extinctions. Global warming, ocean stagnation and acidification associated with over 600,000 years of volcanism may be the underlying cause for the late Triassic extinction. And finally, we examine climate change as a cause for the late Triassic extinction. Perhaps the most generalized but accurate cause of the late Triassic extinction event was an overall climatic shift. Terrestrial sequences that are Triassic in age typically comprise of red beds, aeolian sand, evaporates and play lake deposits. This is because the climate of the Triassic over a large area has generally been considered more arid than present day. However, despite the climate being warmer, it may not have been drier. Many stratigraphic units across present day North America, like the Echo Cove Formation and the Newark Supergroup, show evidence for repeated flooding and drying in lacustrian sediments, suggesting that the climate of the late Triassic was arid but that intermittent monsoonal belts were present. This is also evident from isotope analysis of carbon-13 from a marine carbonate and evaporate sequence in Israel, which has shown a complete depletion of carbon-13, suggesting influences of terrestrial freshwater runoff into the marine realms. Perhaps this overall transitioning into an arid climate with intermittent monsoonal belts in the late Triassic was enough to cause climate-induced changes in vegetation, 
which may have contributed to tetrapod extinction on land and may have had knock-on effects for many habitats and species. As we heard earlier, there is thought to be multiple extinction events occurring throughout the Carnian, Norian and Raytheon Triassic periods. As we have seen, there is no one cause for these extinction events. However, three theories have been put forward that have substantial evidence to back them up. These are massive bolide impacts, a change in climate and an outpouring of magma to dwarf the Deccan traps. To date, no impact site of a suitable age has been located large enough to have triggered the mass extinction. However, many researchers believe that multiple small impacts may have been sufficient to do so. As such, bolide impacts remain a viable but untested theory. Many researchers are of the opinion that increased concentrations of sulfur dioxide and aerosols created a transitionary cooling, but that carbon dioxide and methane increases led to an overall warming of the planet. This global warming may have resulted in acid rain killing plants on land, leading to wider extinctions. Lowering thermoclines and cessation of ocean mixing would have led to hypoxia and acidification. These would have combined to cause widespread loss of life in the oceans. Nature abhors a vacuum, and in the marine realm, the explosive radiation of cephalopods later in the Jurassic filled the ecological spaces left after the extinction. While on land, this space allowed the rise to dominance of some of the biggest creatures ever to walk the earth, the dinosaurs.